Hi there, Jamie Keat here today at Teachers Tech. Hope you're having a great day today. Today I want to show you how to use Pixlr X, which is an easy to use graphic designer. Recently, I just made a video, a short video on how to use Pixlr to remove the background of an image. And it's just done in seconds by using this feature right here and simply drag and dropping things over. Now I'm going to be using Pixlr X right here, which is all online and has that feature and more. I'll be using the 30 day trial one, but even using the completely free one, you can do most of all the actions using it. So let's get started today with Pixlr X on Teachers Tech. So as I just mentioned, I'm using the 30 day trial. If you want to check out the pricing, just click on the pricing up here. And I signed up through this. I used the free for years with Pixlr. And the big thing, the difference will be uh, the ads. Once you, if you do sign up, you won't get the ads on the page. I've never found them that big of a deal, but you can check out uh, the differences, what you get when you pay monthly to a yearly and all the different options. And just so you know, if you're an educator or student, you can actually get Pixlr for free. Uh, this is something uh, I like to use when I was teaching and if we were only having Chromebooks for certain classes uh, this is what uh, I used to teach graphic design because I could uh, they didn't have to install anything and they could just go in and work away from there so I'll put this link down below in the description but let's go over to Pixlr X right here and this is where we're gonna get started from and if you're looking for something specific look down below in the description in the timestamps and you can jump right to that part of the video to save yourself some time so when you first see Pixlr X, uh, you notice that we have latest projects. This kind of stores your latest ones here. Uh, notice what it says. This is local temporary cache. So if you're working on it long term, make sure you save it as a as a uh, Pixlr document. And I'll show you how to do that later. We have templates and these templates are great. And after I go through this tutorial, I think you'll understand how to uh, manipulate those because it can save you a lot of time working with templates, especially when they have already the great design set up for you. And then there's the collages where you can simply uh, just fill in the place for pictures but where I want to start with is working with an image opening up images you could create a blank document I'll show you how to do that later but let's start with opening an image and there's different ways we can do this I could go open image and go find one from my computer these are old thumbnails and open them up I could load from a URL so what I mean, this is, if I go to, I'm just moving over to an image off my site. If I right click on this one and I go copy image address and come back and I paste this in here and hit load, it can pull it off the web into here. So I'm just gonna hit this home button back again here. Uh, another way you can do it is simply drag and drop. So I have some images right here. If I drag this over, do I want to create new or add to current? Well, I want to create new in this one. Add to current would be adding it to already already one I'm working with, but I'm going to hit create new. What do I want to work with? I'm going to just uh, keep it at full HD. There, you can see what the original size is. This is the difference in the paid for and the free one. You don't get the uh, option of this one with the uh, free one, but I'm going to hit apply on this one and it loads up. So. I have my image now inside here and I can give you a little walk around here. And this is the toolbar in today's tutorial that I'm going to go through and show you all the different things that it can do. Uh, we do have over here, you can see our layers. We can zoom up here and we can use our mouse. I use my uh, wheel on my mouse. We have our history down here. So what I'm going to do first is unlock this because right now I can't do anything. It's locked. As soon as I hit unlock on this, notice I get some different options. Now, what do I want to do? If I want to change the size of the image, I could click down on this one and you can see I could just put in different numbers and it's going to stay uh, a proportion constraint uh, if I change this number and I'll just change it to 400. And you can see now it's much smaller and I'm moving around just clicking and holding on my mouse. I can also change it by dragging here. I can rotate this just like this. And I can also grab this just like this too. So I can rotate these all around. 
I'll zoom out again so you can see where it kind of is on the canvas and I'll place this one right here. So as I click on it, notice that we get more options. As I move this, the X and the Y change on here. So now I can add more images this to this if I want to. So if I go back to this one, I can do this in a few different ways. I could hit image here, add image. I could go over to here and hit the plus, and this is the add image right here. And I'll just add another image because what I want to show you, and I'll use this one, and I'm going to go through stock, and there's you get all a lot of stock, and I'll I'll put dog again, and we will use just this one right here. So do I want to add to current? If I say add to current, it will add it uh, to the one I'm working on. You can see over here, there's the background there, the original one was on. But this one's so big, it's covering everything that it's in front of. So I could go to this one and resize this one too. Uh, so if I go to, you can see if I move it around, you can get an idea that it's behind. So I can start to resize. I could do it in different ways. I'll just move my numbers down to similar. And I'm just going to drag this back down. So now I have two images. And I also have two layers right here. So if you think about it, if you had a kind of a construction piece of paper and you uh, had different pictures that you're laying down, one would be in front of the other. So if I drag this one over, this is on top of it. But I can change the order of most of these here. So now if I can drag over, you notice the other ones in front. So there's layers happening. And this is working. So when I work inside Pixlr, if I save this as a JPEG or a PNG, which I'll show you later, it flattens everything together and then you won't be able to move them around. And then the transparency uh, disappears if you save it as a JPEG too. All right, so there's just a couple tips of bringing things in, making some changes, adjusting the picture. So you can do this as you're playing around with this. So right now I have this image selected and if I go ahead and click on the background, uh, now I have the background selected and you can see I can quick add. So click on the image that goes away, click on the canvas and, and I have my quick add. So I'm going to just add these real quickly to show you what these are. So we could add a frame. Now a frame, I can add an image to this. In a couple of different ways I could do this, I could just double click on this plus right here, or I could go set image and open up. And I already have this folder open here that's connected to and from my computer. And I'm gonna hit open and there it will load up inside this uh, frame. Now I can change the uh, a few things about this frame down below so I can change the image and I can still change the size of this. And the other thing I want to note, uh, notice that it's on the top right here. It is another layer. So this can be moved around just like all the other ones by clicking and holding on it. But so now I can put an outline around this too. So if I go ahead and click on outline, I'm going to just change it to a different color that you can see it a little bit more. If I just scroll down, I can change the size of the outline just like this. Uh, we also have shadow. So if I go ahead, turn on the shadow, uh, you can see it a little bit here, but I can change uh, the colors of the, the shadow. And I, you can ch take a look at all the different things that you can change from the blur, the distance uh, to the direction that you want in the shadow. So something to go and play with. Now I'm just going to actually turn off. You just can click off these to turn them off. But you do have different, uh, different shapes you can quickly change. So if I wanted a circle, I can change it. Well, that's more of an oval, but I can change just quickly uh, to have the image inside these different shapes. So that's how you could add uh, pictures inside a shape just like that. We have our text. If you want to add uh, text in a hurry, and remember this plus over here, we could add text over here. So there's a few different ways. Here's our frame that we can add uh, to it. So there's a few different ways you can add things. If I go ahead and add text here, it comes in with the lorem ipsum, but I can quickly change this too. So notice over on the left, as soon as the text came in, I had the options to change all these things now. So if I go over here and I'm just going to say hello, you can see how it uh, changes. Now that's pretty small. Uh, I'm just going to go down here to size and just drag this up and you can see it get 
larger, just like this. I can go through all these different options that uh, I showed you with the images where you can start rotating, uh, you can transform it very similar in the same ways, but you get all these different options that you can go through. So even if it was line spacing, if I had double or more lines of text, if I want the letters spaced out, I can go through here we have our, our alignment and then there's even more. Make sure you're scrolling all the way down. Sometimes I've seen people just not see these things at the bottom, but if I turn uh, this on, you can see uh, I have some options of how I want the text to appear in this one. So as I turn it on, uh, I just flipped it here. I'll just turn it on again. You can see it's at the bottom, but there's all these different things. I turned on the background, turn them on and off and see all the different ways. Uh, there's the color up here. So if you wanted it at a different color, you can just simply click on it and you have a different color on this. Another great way to add text is by clicking right here and hit this add text. You'll see that these are all kind of presets with great design. So if I, uh, if I just go to this one, keep it simple and click on it and it has this and you can customize this. So if I look over in the layers, it added three different layers. So if I just select one layer, so uh, if I wanted to change the word from stupid to silly, I could just type that in there and I could go through and make my adjustments to color and different things. So that add text makes some nice looking text that you can add very quickly to your graphic. Now I'm gonna go back to this option, click on the background here. And I wanna show you just lastly under this one, the shapes here. Uh, no, that's kind of a boring one, just a uh, rectangle. But as I click on uh, different ones, you can see how it adjusts. And I can go through and change the colors uh, just like I did before and make all the different changes to it. So again, make sure you check, scroll all the way down uh, to make sure you've seen everything. Open these up to see the different adjustments you can make uh, to each of the things that you turn on. Now let's say I'm just going to move this out of the way and I know this is kind of random right now but it's always good to make sure you have your things saved. So if all of a sudden I go back to uh, home here, click on home and I'm going to just hit home right up here. I don't want to be under the uh, stock uh, stock search. This is what we're working on and we have some options here. Uh, you can see we can duplicate from here. We can delete. I could hit the X. I could make it a favorite, but if I go back into it, it opens up and I can continue. But remember what I said, if you're working long term, it's good to save it. So if I hit save here, now this is where you want to save it. If you're not done working uh, in Pixlr on it uh, and you want to make sure you uh, keep all the layers and everything so you can keep everything moving, uh, save it as this right here. Then give it a title and then hit download and that will put it on your computer and then when you upload it that will you will be able to keep working with all the layers if you choose like jpeg or the png pmg will keep things transparent background jpeg won't it will turn it into a white background but it will flatten your image so if you want to keep working on it make sure and upload it again make sure you save it as this so i'm just going to cancel i just wanted to make sure that you knew that. The other thing that I wanted to point out is our history. This is great here. So the, this is these are all the things that happened in this corner here. If I click on different ones, notice it goes back in time depending on where I was. was. So each move it gets recorded and I can go forward and backwards into time. So that was further back on it. If I go, oops, clicked on the wrong thing. If I go back to shape set, you can see towards the bottom, it gets back to where I was. So remember the history. If you make a mistake, you can co control Z too, but history makes it so you can quickly uh, go back and see at a different point. Maybe you like something better that you'd done a few moves before. If you ever want to change the canvas size or the image size, take a look at the layout and template. So if I go and click on this, we have resize image and resize the canvas. So if I, I'll show you the difference here. So if I say resize the image and I'm gonna make this smaller and you'll be able to see it makes everything smaller. So it's the whole image together. I'm just gonna undo that. But if I re uh, do this uh, size of the canvas and if I do that same thing here and apply, you can see I've just changed the dimension of the canvas there. So not everything fits the same. Uh, 
and this is if I want to put a background. Right now, these little squares means that it's transparent or see-through. So if I put it on top of another image, but if I do want a background, I can click on it and make the adjustments uh, to it to have a background if you are doing more of a poster thing too. I'm just going to undo a few steps here. I'm going to go down to add elements here because I just want to show you all the different things. And this is where you're going to see some of the difference uh, differences when you have uh, the paid for account or if you're on the trial. So I'll just go to the stickers here right away and it's going to load up these stickers. Now, whenever you see a premium and I'll be allowed to use these, those would be ones uh, that are part of the paid for one. So if I, uh, if I click on one of these, it adds these stickers in here. So if I load it, just like this so I have these stickers that come in here really quickly so I'm just going to go ahead and make this a lot smaller place it over here I'm going to go back and I'm not going to spend a lot of time showing you all these different ones but you can play and have a lot of fun with these if we wanted borders again if you're using the premium ones um, you'll see the difference I'm just going to go I'll go to the flowers and we'll pick this top one and it adds the border just like that and notice when we click on it we can change the transparency uh, of of these two so i'm going to go back here and i'm going to go back one more time and at this point i'm going to actually start uh, from new again and open up an image to show you some of the more things you can do just with the images so I'm just under stock search right here and I'm gonna open up this uh, image right here to use it as an example. I'm gonna hit create new, just to show you a few more things what you can do uh, with your images. Now, if I hit unlock, I wanna point out, so these open up below just like this. These are actually kind of shortcuts. So if I click on um, effect, notice it just jumps down to the effect. If I go back up, if I hit cutout, it goes to the cutout. So it just, it knows it's an image and it gives you uh, the options and it just brings you to those parts here. Now, also up top, we have some things we can do. I'm gonna just make this a little bit smaller here and drag this up. Uh, notice that we can flip vertically, we can flip horizontally, and we can duplicate. So we can have two of those, I could duplicate again and again, or I can use the garbage can like so. Now I'm just gonna go back to open in my history. I'm gonna hit, uh, go back, actually I'm gonna go to crop and rotate. So I just wanna point out, we have some things, if we wanted to get a selection of the, of the image to crop, we could do a straightening. So if there was something we need to do, notice as I drag this, it rotates her face, but it also crops it around. So it's same thing with the other side like that. So uh, I'm just gonna go bring it back to zero here. We'll bring it right to there. And we have the same options that I showed you before when we we're up top, we have a rotate or sorry, our flip and horizontal, but we can rotate through here. Uh, I can crop this way too by grabbing the handles and finding a certain area to crop. And then if I hit apply, it crops that certain area. I'm just gonna undo a step. But if you wanna make sure it's locked, if we hit, hit the select aspect, this always keeps it at one to one. So I can not I can bring it in and out and change the size, but it, or the, it's always gonna stay at one to one. I can, if I knew there's a certain size I had to crop, that uh, I would put my uh, size in and I can crop specifically at that. So that's how you go ahead and do some uh, cropping. So I'm just gonna hit apply just so we get a little bit closer up. Now, next, if we go up here and I'm gonna hit unlock, I just wanna point out the adjust here. So again, if I click on adjust, it brings me down here. We have all these things from color, light, details, scene, toning, fill. I could use the AI up here. So if I hit auto, you can see how it changed. I can hit black and white and it uses the AI to kind of correct things how you might want to do that. But you could go through manually and open any of these up and start to adjust them one by one. And at any time, if you hold down the compare down here, it brings it back to see the kind of the original what you're working with. And if you wanted to go back to the original, you can hit reset. But make sure you kind of go all the way down and keep uh, opening things up and seeing all the options that you have to change it. Now I'm gonna go back up to here. And so I've showed you adjust effects and I wanna go to retouch on this picture. So if we go to retouch, uh, now uh, I just wanna point out these different tools here. So we have heal repair. So here's an example. I'm gonna zoom up and let's say if I, I'm gonna to go to patch 
And I'm just going to go and make this a little bit smaller. You can see here, so I'm going to make this smaller, a little bit smaller still. All right, so now if I click on this spot here, you notice how it starts to disappear. So this is how you can go through and fix uh, different images with it. If you make your, uh, you notice if you make it larger, it starts, it doesn't look as good. If you take your time and go through and kind of do things in a smaller way, um, that's how you would do it. The infill would be the opposite uh, to the patch. Like if I make it smaller, I'll give you an example. If I click on an area, you can see kind of, uh, how it kind of fills it would fill in a spot of it but I don't really have anything in there that would work quite properly to show you we have our clone stamp so if I click on clone stamp what's my source that I want to go from so if I uh, if I go to my source and I'll say this I and I'm holding uh, shift down right now so if I click on shift and now if I go and and if I go now and just click and hold my mouse, you can see I'm copying the eye. You can see the source file going through just like that. So it's copying of it. So if I was going to uh, the mouth, if I click on it, hold shift and click, and I could put the mouth right up here. So it's just copying down below. You can see the uh, how it's copying it up here. So you can have some fun using uh, that tool we have our blur and sharpen and i'll let you play but you can see as you just click and hold it, how a blur and sharpen would be the other one we have our dodge and burn so we are if you want to lighten i'll hit darken so you can so see it better you can kind of see um, as it goes through me if you want it to go stronger you can start to see how you can adjust the images that way too so i'm going to move to a different image to show you a few more options that you have so this time I'm just going to grab this picture here of these two dogs, click on it, I'm going to create new, and I want to show you the cutout feature, how quickly it can work, and if you have to fine tune things. So this cutout here, and this is very similar to the other video I made using the background removal, but uh, you have a few more options when you're using this. Uh, we have our AI cutout. This, If I click on this like this, you can see it just instantly removes it. It keeps what you think you uh, want out just like that. So it works super easy and you can go through and, and adjust the image. You can make this smaller. If I go back to arrange and unlock, I could go back and make these smaller just like that and add more uh, to it. So now if I go back to my uh, cutout again here, and I'm just going to go back to open to back to the original, we have more tools that we can use to cut out too. So we notice we have our mode is keep and remove if we are removing and we could do a shape cutout. Uh, so if I had the heart, if I draw the heart, it cuts it out just like that. Uh, so there's different shapes. You could cut those things out. We do have uh, uh, brush tool so if you wanted to keep something if I go keep I could fill this back in and say hey you better keep that uh, but we could also say remove I could draw around an animal one of these animals like this I'm just going to do this quick I could make my brush uh, smaller if I wanted this softer edges on it I could just bring it over and you can kind of see uh, how the softer works again you can go and hit keep make your brush really big and I'm gonna go back to here and I can, as long as it turns green, it puts it all back to normal here. We do have our lasso, so I could go around and this will be quick. If I go around a certain object, just like this and connect it, it cuts that area out of it. So very quickly, you can go out, you can uh, apply cutout, reset cutout, invert cutout. So the invert would be the opposite of what you had selected. So do take a look. Uh, if you need your background removed, this is a great option. Uh, it's super easy to use. So this liquify tool is a lot of fun uh, to use. And I'm just gonna use the same image that I was just using, but you select what you wanna do by clicking on uh, the actions here. So if I was going to go to push, and I won't change anything right now, but if I click and hold on my mouse, you can see how I can stretch out the photo. So I'm just uh, clicking, holding on my mouse and I can stretch it out and I can undo uh, my steps. So there's always the restore. So if I go back, hit restore and kind of uh, wave my mouse and holding it it brings it back there's these other uh, fun tools here though if I go over and you can change the size the strength the density all the time but if I want to make the eyes bigger 
just like that. Uh, if I want to shrink the eye, uh, I can go and shrink it like this. So maybe I want to shrink the whole head. I can make the uh, size of the brush a lot larger and start to shrink everything like this. And I can always go to the restore and we have our swirl in here that as you click and hold, it does things to it. So a lot of fun uh, with this tool with it. Now I'm gonna move down to the draw tool. And the draw, I could add it uh, to any of the other uh, photos. If I click on it, I get these. But what I wanna do is actually, I'm gonna go back to home here. And I mentioned it before, I wanna create a new. Uh, so just the blank, no images. If I go create new, and you can title and everything, and I'll just say test. Do I want a background? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to use a white background and I have different sizes. I could pick the size if I want. I'll just use uh, 1920 by 1080, hit create. And so I have this kind of this canvas that I can draw on now. If I click draw, uh, we have our brushes. So if I, I better pick a different color rather than the white, you can start to see how easy it and how smooth you can draw and change the colors. And you can go through the size of the brush the softness of the brush, the transparency of the brush on all these. We have our eraser tool that will go through. We have a pen tool. So I'm going to make this a lot larger so you can see it uh, even larger than that. And then if I make, I'm going to go to this color and you can see how it works like a pen uh, or plane, uh, but we can go through and do different things. So as I uh, turn it to sketchy, you can see how the uh, the, the how it looks different. So you do the drop down here, you can do crayon uh, and it keeps changing in it. So lots of fun with these. We can add our shapes very quickly uh, to the canvas right now. That was white. I can change it and add the shapes to it. And the thing I want to point out, notice when I'm drawing, it's not going a separate layer uh, over each one. A lot of times when I'm uh, showing kids or something, I start with this just so they get used to just using the mouse and uh, drawing a picture uh, on this too. But then moving over to the shapes, uh, the, the images, a lot of fun to start to adjust. So I hope you like this tour of uh, Pixlr here today. Uh, use the free one to get started or create your 30 day account like I did to show you with all the different options. I love it that it's all online and how uh, it works uh, pretty easily, especially on the Chromebooks. I'll do a different video on using uh, the uh, more advanced Pixlr on it. But thanks for watching this time on Teacher's Tech. I'll see you next week with more tech tips and tutorials.